It's about time we finally dig into molar technique here on the Non-Glamorous Drummer YouTube channel. Today we're specifically talking about what I refer to as the two-stroke molar, which we use to play an accent tap fast 16th one-handed pattern on the hi-hats. I'm gonna show you ideal stick position on the hi-hats, how to grip for maximum response, and I'll break down the three points of this two-stroke molar motion that'll help us put our right hand on autopilot and get these 16ths up to 80 beats a minute. We'll also watch slow motion footage to make sure everything is super obvious and super clear, so let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer, the channel all about teaching you the most important core drumming skills that help you make music faster. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. So much like last week's video was sort of a companion to a new e-guide, this week's video is the same way. I've got a new guide all about playing hi-hats, going beyond hi-hat 16ths and into foot technique also. That'll really help to improve your left foot coordination. It'll really break down how to play barks and the cool you know, sucking sound and doing open notes on the hats. Basically, the guide is your checklist for mastering the hi-hats, going down a list of just strategies and really good tips for overcoming common hi-hat frustration. So go check that out. The guide is totally free. So the first, probably number one, just fundamental important thing when we're playing 16ths on the hats is stick position. If we want maximum rebound, we could play on top of the hats like this. We can go really fast that way. We basically have the same amount of rebound we would have on the snare. Which is great, but that's not always the hi-hat sound that we want. A lot of times we want a thicker sound. Just to give it a little more beef, a little more weight, and honestly make it a little more musical if we're playing something more rock based. But if we go all the way down to here on the hats, we kind of, we lose that rebound. It's gone, the stick literally not bouncing. And so we kind of have to compromise and find an in-between. If you want to play with a super heavy sound, like, You totally can, but if we're going for quick, light, effortless, even autopilot feeling, one-handed accent tap 16ths, we've gotta find that sweet spot. So for me, it's about right here, where we're kind of a little past the shoulder of the stick and we're really more onto the neck of the stick, where we're getting right up here. And the closer to the end of the stick you are, the more rebound you can actually get here on the edge. There's a big difference between playing here and playing here. When I'm out here, I can be super loose and really my, my hand is able to relax and I'm still able to get a lot of speed. I'm also not closing the hats too tight. I'm keeping them slightly loose. If I go too tight, that doesn't really sound that good. But if I loosen them a tad bit, it just gives them more thickness, a little more weight. And it also helps to emphasize that accent note. I think that's the sweet spot. So go for that with, uh, with your playing. Find that sweet spot with your stick. Find a good angle too, where you're not all the way on top. You're not too far down though. Find that optimum stick angle, uh, and that's really gonna help get you off to a good start. Also, grip fundamentals are super important when doing this. If you don't have basic grip squared away, you're gonna struggle with this. And the number one fundamental is to have this space here, this loop, this space right here between your thumb and your first finger allowing the stick to move freely. That way when we're doing the molar motion, when I break it down for you in a minute, we'll be able to let the stick move all the way up here to get started. That's very difficult if we're squeezing too tight because that means we have to move our hand way back which puts stress on our wrist. So we wanna be really loose here. And really a key thing that I know helps me in doing this, in order to be loose right here at this point, I also have to have my middle finger cradling the stick right here. Hopefully you can see that pretty clearly. As long as the middle finger is here making contact with the stick, I can be really loose right here. And the middle finger actually helps provide a lot of that control. So that's what you wanna go for. It's almost like forming the fulcrum with the middle finger. So this finger could just be out here loosely, but we, we still kinda of have a little bit of a pivot point with the first finger. So really I think my fulcrum is a combination of the point between uh, thumb and first finger and thumb and second finger. So it's kind of an interesting thing. Basically it means you can get away without having these fingers in place and you have complete control. And then we're just using these fingers to clean things up a little bit and gain more speed if we're playing more from our fingers. Make sure you've got that technique going on first. And I'll link a playlist below of videos breaking down basic techniques that I did a few months back. Be sure to check those out if you have any doubts about how loosely and controlled you're able to grip your sticks. So the actual motion here, when we're playing a molar two stroke, 
Well, first, if we were doing the, the, the traditional Muller three stroke, that's where we're getting three notes for the price of one. Much like that, where we've got our initial stroke and then we're letting the bounces form the next few notes. Really, the two-stroke molar is what we're using on hi-hat, where it's the same concept. That's why I call it a two-stroke molar. Same concept where we're letting the second note be a result of the bounce. Which, if you've practiced doubles, you know that's exactly what we're doing with doubles. difference is we then start bringing in our fingers to strengthen that second note so it's not just rebound. And we're kind of doing that same thing on the hi-hat. In a way, we're letting that second note be a result of rebound, but we don't get a whole lot of rebound, and that's where we have to bring this motion into place. In order to turn our hi-hat sixteenths into an autopilot motion that we don't have to think much about, we have to have this up and down motion established where we're hitting the edge of the hi-hats for our first note, hand down, and then we're hitting the top for the second note. So really the, the reason why I say this is a three-point motion is because we're starting with the stick up here. This is our first position. Hand is wide open. Fingers are allowing the stick to be right up here. We bring the hand down, the edge. So at this point, the stick is in this position. We fit the edge of the hats. Our hand is lower than the cymbals. Now we bring our hand up, and as we come up, we hit the top with the tip because now the stick is pointing down as our hand comes up. And then we raise back up, same thing again. Up, edge, top. Up, edge, top, up, edge, top, up, edge, top. And really you don't have to think too much about this. So really it's not a, a point of motion. It just happens naturally once you get it going. So go super slow like this, work on getting it even where the notes are all evenly spaced. One E and a uh, two E and a uh, three. The whole time you're watching your hand, you're making sure things are loose, and you're watching for this up and down motion. Exaggerate that motion, make a big deal out of it. That's okay. Down, up, down, up, edge, top, edge, top. The whole time, I'm keeping my hand really loose. And as I'm getting faster, I'm starting to close my hand in a little more because the stick isn't having to move as much because we're kind of condensing the motion and my hand is moving up and down less. So overall, the motion starts to lessen as we get faster, even if we're keeping the volume the same. But it's still that same one motion is the two notes. Our down motion is the first note and then coming back up, that gets us the second note. So it's still two for the price of one and that's why I call this a two stroke molar. So practice it a bunch slowly. The motion is critical. You gotta get the motion happening smoothly. Otherwise there's no point in trying to up the tempo yet. So go really slow. Let's find a good tempo. So if you're playing 16ths, if you're playing these as 16ths, I'd say don't go any faster than 40 beats a minute. If you wanna play them as eighths, you can go 80 beats a minute which is our goal tempo of doing 16. So basically we're starting at half tempo and our goal is to double that tempo. So I'd say start out doing eights at 80 beats a minute. Just make sure you have that motion smooth. Don't go any faster than that. And honestly, if you wanna go even slower, you could do eights at 70. Or even slower than that, honestly because we're just focusing on the motion. We've gotta get that motion smooth. And then from there, we can begin to gradually speed it up. And just because you've gotten the tempo sped up to a point where it's like, yeah, this is happening, this is feeling good, that doesn't mean you shouldn't still go back and practice it slowly. Every day, start your practice slow, work on the core motion slowly, then gradually work it up. And that way, each day, you're getting a well-rounded practice of all tempos, and you're getting that motion better and better and better.
So then once that's happening, then you're ready to turn it into a groove and make something really cool out of it. And so at that point, the goal should just be to get a slow groove together and gradually work it up quicker every day, the whole time listening to that timekeeping, focusing your ear on the hi-hat, making sure that's smooth. The other big important thing here is that when you're playing a hi-hat 16th groove, the timekeeping is the most important part of that groove, gluing it all together. Yes, you want the kick clean, you want the snare clean, you want everything consistent and tight, but if the hi-hat pattern isn't happening smoothly, and if your molar motion isn't happening so that you can put it on autopilot essentially, then it's gonna be really hard to glue everything together and you're gonna be frustrated. And so continually practice that hi-hat pattern so that it's feeling really good. That way, when you put a groove together, you're not having to go, uh, accent, tap, accent, tap. No, you've gotta have the motion happening in order for it to all glue together nicely. And the cool thing is too, that same kind of motion will apply to the ride. You can make a ride groove out of it also. And so you get the idea, you can apply that same pattern around the kit. And on the ride, you get a lot more rebounds. So honestly, it's easier. And you can kind of flip over to a French grip and just get that happening. But practice it on the hi-hat first, because if you can do it here, you can do it anywhere. So to sum all of this up, number one, go grab the guide. It's totally free. I'll also send you some additional email tips that'll help you out further with this stuff. But grab the guide, because that'll give you a great hi-hat overview. So you can go beyond just this and work on the left foot coordination too. There's some exercises in there that'll help you a bunch with that. Step one here though, was find the ideal stick position right about here with this angle for ideal rebound and ideal sound. Don't close them too tight. Find the right hi-hat height that allows you to get a good stick angle here without having to stick your elbow out too far if they're up here or without hands getting tangled up if they're too low. So you have to find a good in between. Practice gripping loosely, but controlled. That middle finger plays a big part in that. Make sure you've got a loose fulcrum here, using the first finger and the middle finger, so you can keep things really loose as you're doing the molar. Exaggerate it, a big down, up, down, up, edge, top, accent, tap, accent, tap. Keep that slow, establish the motion, then from there, gradually work on upping the tempo. And from that point on, it'll happen naturally. Hey, I hope this video helped you out. I hope this lesson was valuable to you. I know this is a pretty popular hi-hat topic. And so um, I hope this showed you what you needed to learn. And I hope the slow motion footage helped to clarify things too. But yeah, if you have any further questions and you wanna go further with this, definitely go download the guide because that's gonna go um, more in depth with other areas of hi-hat playing also and getting that left foot coordinated so you can get a more well-rounded picture of the hi-hat. So that is your checklist for mastering the hi-hats, nine strategies for overcoming struggles with 16th, left foot coordination, stack, you know, open notes. So go grab that. It's totally free. As always, guys, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe before you go and check out some of the other videos as well here also. Thanks, guys. Have a great week. I will see you next time.